Okay, hello there, I'm Dennis. And in this video, we're gonna talk about some tips that I've learned using FreeBSD. I've installed FreeBSD on a Dell Optiplex computer. Let me bring this terminal up. And bring up NeoFetch. And you'll see that this is FreeBSD 13, release P3 on AMD64 using XFCE. The processor or CPU is i5-2400, and we've got 16 gigabytes of RAM. I've learned a few things along the way, and I'd like to share them with you. One of the things is something I've talked about in just about every video, and that deals with audio. We're going to run through that, and you'll see what I had to do, and maybe I can help you determine what you need to do. If you're not getting any sound at all, first thing you want to do is you want to see what kind of sound cards your device has. So you're going to type in cat space slash dev slash SND slash stat. And this will show you that uh, uh, everything that's capable of either receiving or producing audio output or input will be listed here. If it's not, you're in trouble. <laughs> But anyway, mine is a, I'm using the display port with HDMI right there. So mine is PCM3. Now that's a little deceiving because it actually starts with zero. So one, two, three, mine is actually three and not two, even though it's listed here like that. We've got that set up and we know now that we, we want to choose one of these for a default sound card. One way to find out what the default sound card is, is running this command right here. And my default sound card is unit three, which I've already set that right here. If yours is not set right and you want to change it, follow that command back, type in at the end of it, equals, and then whatever, my, my case it was three, whatever your sound card is. All right, now that, that sets it as default, but if we don't make that persistent or permanent, every time you boot into your machine, you'll have to run this same command just to get your volume work. If you go into your Etsy or ETC sysctl file, sysctl.conf file, right here, the bottom last entry, is the exact same command that we run to set the unit. When we boot up, this command will run and your volume will be set to whatever your unit is. Let me escape, get out of there. I didn't do anything, so let me clear that. So that's how you make it, your sound card start when you start or when the machine <laughs> starts. Now, uh, another thing you're going to need to do is go into your etsyrc.com file. I'll bring mine up and show you. You can see the last entry here is mixer enable equals yes. And there you go. So when you reboot, let me get out of here. In the rc.com file, it's going to enable the mixer. It's going to start the mixer. And now it's going to start it with the correct sound card. Once you do that, you should be good to go. Now, another problem I run into is with the microphone. In particular, a USB microphone. I plugged the headset in with the what I call the 8th inch jack. It's a something mill now. I could get that microphone to work just fine. But I have USB microphones, and I prefer to use that. And I could not get OBS Studio to recognize. It wouldn't even list it. It wouldn't even list it once I determined it was SDA3 or whatever the device was, DA, DA0 or something. It wouldn't even recognize it when I pulled down the list to assign that microphone. It wasn't even listed. <laughs> If you're going to use a USB microphone, take it from me. Plug it in before you turn your machine on. Once you do that, 
with these settings here, it will load it up and you'll find it immediately. That's what I had to do in order to get it to work in OBS Studio. Close that back down. Now, to start with my microphone, it was set at 25%. Couldn't, no matter what I did with any of these settings here in the audio mixer, Pulse Audio audio mixer, nothing made a difference. It didn't matter if I turned it up or down. In fact, you can see this is turned all the way up to 151%. It's barely picking up. <laughs> so that made no sense to me. And then I found these commands here. So let me run mixer. And you'll see that I'm, my volume, PCM, and mic is all set to 75 on left and right channels. And how I got that was I ran these commands right here. Originally, if when I run Mixer, it would say Mixer volume 100, 100. PCM was like 50, I think, 50, 50. And then the microphone, the, mo the important thing for me, and it was set to 25, 25. To set the mixer levels, master mixer level, run this command right here, sudo, it won't hurt me to rerun them. Let me just do that. And there's an extra space right there. Take that out. Now you can see it said setting the mixer volume from 75, which is already was on, to 75. Now for your microphone, and specifically your microphone, run these following commands here, and it's just going to say it's changed it from what I've already changed it to. <laughs> I'm doing this just to show you this is what I had to do in order to get my mic levels to work properly. And I've already done all these, which you can see as in the result there, or by in the result. And when you get through running these, now you'll have to experiment with each one of these to find out the correct levels for your machine and your microphone. 75 seems to be a good good place for me gives me a good volume and it's not clipping i go up to 100 then i have to be really careful and most of the time it'll clip anyway okay so then once you get all that set you can run that mixer command again and you'll see these are all set now the reason why i went ahead and set these before the video and you didn't see me actually run these and what the default mixer levels were was because if I do that, then it messes up OBS because it's it's changing uh, a setting right in the middle of the recording. So it's just it was easier for me to go ahead and just show this to you. Okay, let's cover something else here. I'm gonna control F, clear that screen. I do have sudo set up here, and if I go sudo package install, and let's just say Emacs. If I go in here and I press enter right there, it's going to search the repositories, tell me what it's going to install. But you'll see right here, the default is capital N, which is no. It's going to default to no. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say no right now anyway, clear that screen, and I'm going to show you how to change that. If you want to make the default always yes, then we're going to need to go into this file right here, package.com. Okay, so that's editor ee user local etsy package.com. Hit enter. And you want to be careful in here. If you, it says right here at the top, you don't even have to have a package.com file. But if you don't, then a lot of these things may not work at all without it, the other software. Anyway, so if you scroll down here, let's go down here where it says default, always yes. If you take this off, take the hash mark off, remove the pound sign, and come over here to false, and let's change that to true. Okay. Now, also, if, if you decide you want are the type of person that when you install something, you know exactly what it is, you don't want to have to say, uh, you don't want to have to confirm the installation. You can change that setting right here where it always assumes yes. And you basically change 
this one just like I just did the always default. So I'm gonna, in the easy editor, I'm going to control X. I mean, escape. <laughs> I'm sorry. Leave the editor, and I am going to save the changes, and control L will clear that screen. Now let me bring up that package install. And let's see what we get. Okay, so now you can see the Y is uh, it's a capital Y, so it has defaulted to yes. And that's how you change that. Which to me, I like, I do that to me. I'm going to leave that right there in my system. I, I changed it back just to show you what the default setting was. I like that. I would much rather be able to just hit enter instead of having to type Y and then enter. <laughs> okay. All right, let's move on. I found a graphical uh, USB ISO burner for fr free BSD, and it's called Unibootin. And the only way you're going to get Unibootin, you can install it over here and control L and then control shift B. But it's not going to be in your menu. If you just try to run it without the sudo or su super user privileges, it won't open. It'll, a screen will pop up and say it won't open. But it, bring up a terminal, type in sudo unibootin, press, get over here, press enter. Here's unibootin. And it allows you to select a disk image, write it to a USB drive. A bunch of pre pre installed uh, OSs. So I mean, it's, a, it's I've used it before. It's actually a very good. So if you don't want to have to use a terminal to DD all your USB drives, here's your uh, option for a graphical one. Okay. Now, last point I think I want to get here is when you when you do do a, a uh, install a lot of times if you carry out the install that is you'll get these messages saying what you'll need to do to actually get it to work for an example here i installed some programs one of them being k3b and i copied and pasted out of the terminal into this text editor all the commands or all the directions warnings it was giving me Telling me I had to do this and do that, and it's important. <laughs> it's telling you this stuff because it wants you to do it. Just say you did a, a install and you saw that it had a warning, but you was out of time and you had to just stop for whatever reason, and you didn't copy and paste it. You thought you'll do that tomorrow, or whatever. Well, there's a way to retrieve those messages, and. Here's the command to do that. So we're going to go pkg space info space hyphen hyphen pkg space message. And then whatever the software was, you can't just run it at, with just message. You have to uh, spe specify a software. There I go. And if I just, if I was to compare these two with mailed or whatever, they would be identical because I just, all I did was just highlighted everything, copied it and pasted it into my feather pad. But if you didn't, wasn't able to do that, or you just want to check and make sure that there wasn't any messages you missed, pkg space info space hyphen hyphen pkg space message, and then whatever that software that you was in question. I hadn't found a way where you can just go all <laughs> and get all of them, but it does keep them for a while. If you ever have to go back, if something's not working particularly, K3B, for instance, in my case here, wasn't working, and I knew the specific what was happening. I could actually come back and look at these notes or bring it up in my terminal and look at the notes go through it and make sure whatever it required to get done is done in my rc.com file there was a set of an entry in there dev fs system rule set equals in double quote system well that's for k3b and, and it was required let's see right here etsy rc.com 
Okay, so that's a few things I've learned and I wanted to share with you and hopefully make your road a little easier than mine was. The audio seems to be the worst worst part of free BSD. It's the biggest learning curve. Worst part's not not the right word. It took some time. I'm glad to share this with you. I, like I said, I really hope that if you're interested in record using FreeBSD and interested in any kind of recordings whatsoever, I hope this sound right here helps you on your levels and your sound card. So thank you very much for watching. Y'all have a good day. Peace out. Bye.